What do you think about the performance of tech company right now as compared to 2016 with respect to social discourse? Uh, it's gone downhill because the burdens have gotten heavier and their approach hasn't evolved uh, as quickly as you'd hope. In 2019, 3.5 billion people used social media to meet friends, post updates, and read the news. Ironically, though created to connect us, this same technology instead increasingly divides our nation's democratic fabric. So how did we get here? Let's go back in time. Do you make testimony in this committee that Google is not favoring in its search results one party over another or one candidate over another? Legal troubles over copyright infringements aren't slowing down Napster. They Napster must stop allowing music fans to swap copyrighted material. Napster allowed for the sharing of music files with 80 million users at its peak. Incredible unheard of numbers at its time, but its effects were beyond just music. Uh, it was really the first social network. It was how people interacted with each other at that time. But as Napster roamed unregulated, it all came to an end because of one thing, piracy. Napster caught front page national headlines in a series of heated congressional testimonies with Metallica. Americans love music and Americans are listening to and making music like ever before. Record sales and music radio listening are up. In a lot of ways, Napster was um, way ahead of its time, both technologically and from a legal perspective. When music sales declined significantly because of piracy, the government stepped in and it worked. But Napster's story reveals a broader pattern with tech companies. If you think about the way technology has gone in our country, with radio, for example, then going into television, then coming into the internet, where you've had these big advances in, in the technology of media, but we don't want the downside of the internet. We don't want this feeling that um, all of our privacy is gone. So I think we're way past the time when we should have some of those sorts of rules for the internet. Now we have another issue. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated. In 2016, Cambridge Analytica collected data to influence the 2016 election from 87 million Facebook users, of which only 270,000 had consented. This time, we're not faced with music piracy, we're faced with personal information piracy. That essentially what the companies were doing were creating you know, dossiers on everybody that really detailed uh, about the information about what um, what, you know, what type of web searches they did, what sites they visited on the internet, I mean, even things that weren't just on the platform itself. In a 2014 survey, 91% of Americans agreed that consumers are no longer in control of the way their personal information is used and gathered. As the Cambridge Analytica scandal has shown, tech companies have the means and power to influence voters and our democracy, and the concerns of the majority of Americans are understandable. Can we use what we did in the past by shutting down Napster to fix this problem? Can we shut down Facebook and Google? Facebook and YouTube and some of the larger platforms really are the way that dissidents organize. It's the way that families in diaspora, you know, it's the only way they can keep in touch with each other. No, tech companies have become too integral in our society to be removed. So many different platforms connect people from all over the world. So this leads us to the fundamental question. Are tech companies killers or pillars of democracy? The answer is both. It's precisely because they have become so central to our communication that they have the power to destroy it. As we integrate technology into our lives more and more, it becomes important to make sure that we are not sacrificing any rights that we would otherwise, that we would otherwise have. This friction between tech and democracy will not go away on its own, yet, through policy change and government action, hope of making change still remains. Take it from Alistair McTaggart, a real estate developer who was shocked by privacy violations and spearheaded the passage of the California Consumer Privacy Act, going against six trillion dollars. You're on Facebook and you're seeing news and you think it's just news and you don't understand that it's being self-selected to, to try to drive you somewhere. Uh, or you're seeing search rankings and you don't understand that the searches, the results to what you're seeing are also trying to convince you. You can't know whether I've been in rehab or when I've been to the gym or whether I've been to an abortion clinic. You can't use that for advertising. 
And right now they can and do use it for advertising, which is just spooky. As Silicon Valley students, we witness tech companies firsthand as they roam unregulated and unchecked. They will increasingly shape how we talk, how we act, and how we think without boundaries. Privacy is not a partisan issue. Tech companies' sphere of influence has and will affect our democracy. What a government does to regulate these tech giants will determine if these effects are more benevolent or sinister. We do not expect but implore 2020 presidential candidates to address tech regulation. It is up to 2020 presidential candidates to decide regulation for tech companies before the tech companies decide for us.